For those of you who don't know, Tara is our senior faculty for corporate training programs here at The Corporate Agent, but she's also CEO and founder of Powers Resource Center, which is a nationally recognized award-winning firm that's developed and delivered corporate training programs to the Fortune 500 and mid-market space for more than 20 years. Her client list includes McDonald's, the World Bank, Aflac, Virgin America, Caterpillar, Western Union, Mrs. Fields Cookies, Phillips, Dish Network, Crocs, and so many more, many she's not even allowed to mention. She's an international best-selling author, award-winning leadership coach, and wily disc expert, sought-after speaker, and crusader against crusader against boring, ineffective employee training. Her firm has developed and delivered training programs to more than 200 companies and more than 15,000 corporate leaders. For four years running, Tara's leadership programs have earned the prestigious recognition as a top 10 Leadership 500 award winner by HR.com alongside big brands like Corn Ferry, Hilton, Honda, MIT, and others. So think about that. The corporate training programs that companies like Honda and MIT and Hilton are running, Tara has received the same, her programs have received the same level of awards as those. And in fact, she's even been a judge in some of these competitions because she's well recognized across the Fortune 500 for being a top leader in corporate training. Uh, Tara is also a judge for the coveted Brandon Hall Excellence Awards, which evaluates and recognizes the world's best corporate training programs. In July 2018, Tara published Virtual Teams for Dummies with Wiley and was recognized in Colorado Business Magazine as a woman to watch. In January 2019, Tara was awarded an HR Contributor Icon Award for her thought leadership on virtual teams chosen by a jury that included senior executives from Pepsi, GE, UPS, TIAA, TripAdvisor, HP, New York Life, and more. Tara speaks nationally on vital topics as the importance of human connection and emotional intelligence and leadership, simple secrets to creating healthy organizations, and how to build cohesive, committed teams. I could not be more honored to have her on our faculty here at The Corporate Agent. She is indeed the real deal. And so please help me welcome to the virtual stage, Tara Powers. Tara, woo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I'm not doing announcements. I get to actually uh, talk to you today about something that obviously I care deeply about, which is the training and development industry. And I'm curious how many of you out there consider yourself a facilitator or a trainer? Just give me a little hand wave here. All right, my second question, how many of you got into it accidentally? So you're an accidental trainer, yeah. That happened to me too, right? That's exactly how I got into training. My background was actually accounting and finance. And I was asked to teach managers how to read budgets because they did not know how to do it. So I did some research, put together a training program, and that was when I discovered my passion, which was teaching people, being a facilitator, a guide to their learning and growth and development. There's really nothing in my opinion and in my experience that has been more fulfilling for me, is to help people on their learning and growth journey, especially to become amazing leaders. So today, what we're gonna talk about is really looking at the shift that has been taking place in the market since COVID and the pandemic. And there is a lot of opportunity. I love this quote from John F. Kennedy. The Chinese used two brush strokes to write the word crises. One brush stroke stands for danger, the other for opportunity. And in a crisis, be aware of the danger, but recognize the opportunity. And I will be 100% vulnerable when the pandemic hit. I totally freaked out. I don't know, anybody else about your training company, right? What was gonna happen? Uh, but I quickly got on the phone. I called my clients. I offered them some remote learning um, opportunity, remote leadership opportunities. And that worked for about a month. You know, I got a, had a lot, I was doing like three webinars a day. But then I had a month or a month and a half where things dipped pretty significantly. 
And then I started to recognize the opportunity. And that's what I'm gonna talk to you about today, coupled with research and data that is in the market. So let's go ahead and get started. So our agenda today, and please feel free to ask questions as we go. I'm normally used to a lot of interaction, so that's great. Uh, but we're gonna talk about the current market opportunity for training and development. We're also gonna discuss what shifted because of the pandemic and how can you position yourself to take full advantage. The good news is it's little tweaks, right? It's in your language, it's in the way you offer. Uh, what your solutions, that really matters. And then thirdly, we're gonna look at some training solutions that you want to be considering right now because it's what the market is demanding. And if you were on the call yesterday or the program with um, Jennifer Homer from ATD, you're gonna hear a lot of the same things. I was so happy that there's a lot of alignment there. All right. Let's just check in on the amount of money that flows through the economy regarding training and development because it is mind boggling. Worldwide, we spend $370 billion on training. 170 of that mostly is in North America. I also think this is pretty unbelievable is that uh, the average spend per employee in 2018 was about $1,300. So on average, companies are spending about $1,300 per employee. In 2019, it's about 1,400. And as you go up the chain, right, in, a, in an organization, obviously it, you spend a lot more on managers, on high level leaders, on executive coaching, et cetera. Let's talk about some of the biggest trends that learning and development professionals were excited about before the pandemic. And as we do this, I wanna ask you, as I'm going through a couple of these, which ones do you think immediately skyrocketed in our industry? So let's look at the things they were excited about. And I'm gonna have to step closer because it's really small. But number one, personalized learning and adaptive learning. So learning that adapts to the, to the person who is actually learning it, right? That's the number one thing they were excited about. The second is data-driven assessments. So they really love that big data, which is why what Lisa Ann Edwards is talking about, the ROI, so, so very important. Employee-led learning, we're gonna talk about this. A lot of companies I'm working with, I now am incorporating people internally, right, to help teach because their business is changing so rapidly and so fast and I'm not in there, I don't know all of the things that are happening in real time, but they do, and so I bring them into the training that I'm doing. Let's look at a couple others. Virtual instructor-led, augmented reality, virtual reality, bite-sized training. So I want training very short, in chunks, just when I need it, and then of course gamification. So what do you think immediately jump to the, to the uh, top. And I'm just looking over here on our board. Virtual instructor-led training, absolutely. Employee-led, yep. AV, yes, the, uh, a virtual reality. AI, absolutely. Yeah, and gamification, all of those, right? Adaptive learning, so very important. So let's actually dive into what has shifted since COVID. I find this pretty amazing, but not surprising. There was an 8,135% increase in these searches after COVID happened. The number one, remote learning, not surprising. Number two, virtual instructor-led training. And number three, leading through adversity. That hasn't really changed, right? That is still what people are searching for. So I want you to all think about this in your own business. What are you doing to be able to offer remote opportunities, virtual instructor-led training, and perhaps topics around adversity, resiliency? If you've ever heard of VUCA, living in a VUCA environment, really popular right now. So these are really important things to notice. What are companies searching on? 
Let's talk about whatever, what else has shifted. And in my opinion, I find this super exciting and terrifying at the same time. And that is the leap of learning technology. So when we think about learning technology, that is, it's just gigantic, right? It's enormous. And any technology that supports remote workforce training and improves your ability to do video conferencing, connect people in a remote environment, those things are skyrocketing. Any of you who had stock in Zoom before, the, before COVID, I really wish I was there with you because I was really bummed out to see what happened and I didn't have any money invested in them. Um, but here's the thing that, that's important. The, any technology that connects people, that helps them actually work together, collaborate effectively, that is what is exploding. So I'd love to see on here, what are you seeing your clients use? What has been some of the learning technology you have seen them adapt over the last six months very quickly? So go ahead and type that. So we've got podcasting, Mural, Mur Murio, there's two of them. Really helpful collaboration tools I use all the time. Microsoft Teams, Slack, absolutely, Blue Jeans, uh, Zoom, Teams. Oh, there's some good ones on here. New Row, some I probably don't even know, of course. Uh, Pear, Pear Deck, WebEx, of course, Skype chatting, Stomes, never heard of that one. Blue Jeans, I have heard of. Hangouts, yeah, Google Meet. So this is what your clients are using and this is what we have to start to get comfortable with. The great news is a lot of these companies do their training for free. You can go on their website, you can train for free on how to use their technology. This is something you want to definitely do because this is what your clients expect. They expect it of you. The other thing that I'm noticing that's happening because I'm getting calls that I've never had before is larger companies are looking to curate content from people they see as an expert in the industry. And I don't know if you listened to what Jennifer Homer said yesterday, she mentioned this. So I'm getting calls from large companies and we're a small boutique consulting company, but we do a lot of marketing. We put ourselves out there, I speak often, and they are asking, what do you have that is scalable and on demand for remote leaders? This has caused us to dive in to learning technology around learning management systems. So how can I take my programs, put them on a learning management system where people can take it on demand, right? And then secondly, and this is something we're currently looking into right now, these large companies have their own internal learning management systems. And if you're not familiar with what that means, a learning management system is where they house all their courses. All their courses are online. They can track who's taking them. They can track when they finish them. They can give them certification badges and all of that stuff. So these big companies are looking for courses, content, that they can buy, they can package up, buy it, and put it on their learning management system. And what they're looking for are courses that are called SCORM compliant. And you can look that up, but it's basically a way of developing courses that allows them to put it on their own system. So this is another leap for our business that we're trying to take advantage of. How do we make this switch to doing things that are scalable and on demand, and then also being able to package it up in this particular way so that we can sell it to these large companies? SCORM, yes, thank you everybody, perfect. So my question for some of you, I, I cannot tell you how many calls I've had with some of you on this, on this uh, program today about what learning management system are you using? And literally there are, I don't know, hundreds out there. Um, and so I just thought it might be helpful if this is of interest to some of you. You wanna do some research to just see what are some of your colleagues doing? What are some of your peers in this space doing? Lost audio, it says. Can you guys hear me? Back? Carrie, good, all right, so I'm back, sorry. So my question is for all of you, if you've been researching learning management systems for your own business and there are cost-effective options out there where you can put your courses online and make them on demand, what have you been using you love? So type that in chat 
this is a benefit to all of you, right? I want you to just know this might be something I can go and do some research on. They're usually monthly fees for using them, but they're reasonable. You can do this, right? And if you have the content, it's a great way to make it on demand. So something for you to think about. All right, so let's talk about some of the new challenges of remote work. What has happened since people went remote? And it's not going back anytime soon. It's not going back quickly. Um, and so there's some really interesting challenges I'm dealing with with clients. They're calling me about. Some of them I'm not sure anyone's ever dealt with because I'm calling the experts that I think have the answer and they don't. Right? They don't even have the answers. So there's a real opportunity here to figure out maybe your own path to, to dealing with some of these challenges, coming up with your own solutions. So let's check out some of these challenges. The first that I think is really important is HR policies. Here's where I'm experiencing it. It, it happens to be in manufacturing environments. So for those of you that deal with manufacturing, all of the people in the, in the plants, they're front line, right? They have to go into work every single day, COVID, no COVID, right? That is happening. People in the office in many states are being told, if you can, stay home, work from home. That is causing an inequity. That is causing issues, especially in manufacturing. And what I'm finding my clients are struggling with are policies to address those problems. They range from vacation time, sick time, because you can imagine if people are working from home, they're much more apt to show up to a meeting sick and not take PTO. They don't have to. They're not, they don't have to, to, to uh, take that PTO time. So how do we make things fair and equitable around our policies when we might have people working remote, part-time, working remote, full-time, or some kind of blend? The second is obviously cybersecurity. So one of the things that I have thought about is, it, it, would it be helpful for me to bring on a cybersecurity expert? I've talked to a couple people about some of my clients' issues and have that person in the wings, right? Because they want us to develop learning for their employees who are remote, but they're also concerned about security issues. So it's really helpful to have that person kind of on your team or at least on your bench. Health and wellness. How many of you have clients that have been reaching out to you concerned about their employees' emotional health and wellness? Anybody having those conversations, right? Being at home is increasing the loneliness epidemic in the across the world. It is a real epidemic. There's data on it. You can look it up. Remote has caused that to skyrocket. And it is, uh, I think, something we all need to build in to our training programs, whether you're talking about resiliency, emotional intelligence, we also need to be talking about mental fitness, right? We need to be talking about uh, self-care. I'm starting to bring this in to my topics. And this was something companies never wanted to discuss before, but they're totally open to it now because they're so detached, right? And they feel that is an issue with their employees. Performance management. For those of you in the space of working with leaders, huge opportunity here. They do not understand how to keep a pulse on employee performance in a remote world. And honestly, it's a lot of the same things they would do, but they have to be intentional about connection. They have to be intentional about the type of conversations they have. They have to be intentional about the meetings that they're putting on their calendar. So if you are in that space, this is a really hot topic right now, leads to results, really important for companies, hot topic to be thinking about. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. I know we have a ton of DEI experts on this call. I believe there's a huge opportunity. How do we make sure everyone's voice is heard when we are in a remote environment? This is a huge opportunity as well. And then of course, how do we maintain a healthy team culture? Big, big opportunity, as well as helping these leaders shift their mindset who have never managed remotely before. 
And I think you might have heard Angelique tell that the little quote, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? I wrote an article one time, if my employee's working from home but I can't see them, are they actually getting anything done? Because that is the mindset issue I am here dealing with from a CEO to every single manager I talk to who has never done this before. I mean, they, people are going to crazy lengths to ensure their employees are working. Like they gotta have a little green light on, you know, they have to be available any moment of the day, every moment of the day. It's really a cluster right now. So anything you can do to deal with that mindset of helping those managers make that switch and really understand they gotta get better at goal setting. They gotta be better at setting expectations and clear, uh, clear expectations and giving consistent feedback and putting measures in place, right? It's like management 101 on steroids. That's what it is. That's what we need. So that is some of the challenges of remote work. And let's see. Yeah, working from home, definitely. Just seeing some of the comments here. And it is an issue of trust, which is an issue of culture. So here's the other thing that has shifted, and many of you have seen it, and Ani and Brian have been doing an amazing job talking about this, and they're totally tapped into this, which is the attention on brain science. We have so much more information and research on brain science and how our brains work, what makes us happy, what makes us depressed, what, emo what how do we you know, uh, light up emotional intelligence in our brains, how do we make sure training sticks, how do we address the forgetting curve? You might have heard Angelique mention, we know so much more about this. And one example of this is something called nudge theory. And I've just, I'm saying this because I've done something around it because of uh, my, the understanding uh, that we have now on brain science. So nudge theory is when we provide little nudges of positive reinforcement about something we've taught people. So think about that in your own uh, organization for your next training session. Is there a way you can nudge people with positive reinforcement, little tips, little questions that get their day started, right? This is exploding right now in the learning and development market. And the best way that it's happening is through app technology. It's the easiest. Actually, Angelique has done an amazing job of doing this every morning on your phone. You're getting a little nudge. Hey, are you showing up today, right? She added some fun little things. It got me excited. I was like, oh, what are we gonna do today? This looks great, right? It makes you keep showing up. It primes your brain for learning. And honestly, app technology, I, get, I must get three people that reach out to me each week who are app developers that say, hey, we do app developing and it's really cheap. This is something to just consider or figure out how can I create my own nudge technology. And if you wanna see an example of what we're doing, I just put our um, URL on their virtual team app. So it's for virtual teams. You can go check out what we're doing and it talks about the nudge technology on there, okay? All right, so what else has shifted? The other thing that companies care deeply about right now is that when we are building learning, we're making it agile. What does that mean? Well, here's, this is how I like to think of it. First of all, we're crowdsourcing learning before we even develop it. So let me give you an example of that. I have a company that reached out. They want me to do training on remote leadership. That's great. I said, let me talk to some of your top leaders that are doing it great, and let me talk to a couple of your leaders that are struggling. I'm gonna crowdsource what is working and what is not working so that I make sure I adapt and adjust and make my learning more personal for that organization, right? So it, we, they really wanna know, you care about us. You don't wanna just go in there and say, here's what I got, that's all, can't customize it. I'm seeing a lot more of this agile customization that we need to be willing to do and it honestly doesn't take that much time and it makes you a much better facilitator. So making it personal, making it transferable. I always include a case study from their business so that what they're learning, they can immediately apply in their business, immediately, right? It's transferable directly to their company. Then I get feedback. I always ask for feedback 
then we go back to the drawing board, we review, we adapt, and then hopefully we do it again. Right? We want to make sure we're doing it again. That's agile. We have to be agile. They expect us to be agile. So you want to keep all of those things in mind as you're thinking about the training that you currently offer. All right, what else am I hearing companies want? I'm sure many of you heard it, right? Micro learning. Everybody hear that term? Anybody know? Anybody not hear the term micro learning? Never heard of it before. Raise your hand. It's okay. Nobody else can see you except me. Okay. <laughs> so micro learning is where we take the information we have, the content we have, and we break it down into bite-sized chunks. So if you have a half-day workshop, if you have a full-day workshop, one of the best things you can do right now is break that down into chunks. Maybe it's a one-hour workshop, 90 minutes. Maybe you're gonna do a quick little video on each of those chunks, and you're gonna start sending that out as your nudge, right, before they attend the 90-minute session. But people want bite-sized learning just in time, right? That's what they want. They also, this, I already mentioned this, they want involvement from people in their organization. So when I say SME, that means subject matter expert. They want you to reach out to someone in their organization who's a subject matter expert on the topic so that we can hear their story. We can create a case study. This is what makes it relevant. This is what makes training stick when they know, wow, you talk to our leaders, this is their story, I'm gonna listen to this. This is important. They also want learning to be as personalized as possible. So allowing people to choose. That is a lot easier when we have stuff that's on demand. It's a little bit harder when you're doing uh, training for an organization and they call you, this is normally how it goes, right? I get a call, we have conflict. We need a conflict uh, program for these teams. And then I say, can you let me talk to a few people? Let me find out what's really going on. And what I find out is conflict is the product of what's happening, right? There's a bunch of other issues. Uh, misclarity of roles, responsibilities, people aren't working on the right goals, priority, priorities aren't aligned. So what's really interesting, the way that I personalize group learning is I like to talk to people and I like to do a survey. And then when I do the learning, I am providing their data back to them. And I'm helping the company choose topics based on the data from their leaders, from their teams. So that's how I bring that choice into it. Scenario-based. Uh, this is really important. It's really like the case studies that I mentioned. Scenarios from the company, they retain it more. Simple, right? If, if this is the, the uh, um, office environment I work in, these are the kind of clients we serve, these are the exact problems we're facing, this is a story that happened to me last week, and this is what our leaders are saying is the best way to handle it, I'm going to remember that, right? Really important. And then finally, having things that are on demand. So when you think about your learning and training that you have right now, what can you offer to them that they might be able to open up anytime they need a little tip? Maybe it's a white paper, maybe it's a video, maybe it's something they can house on their internal LMS or you have a, a, a section on your website where people can go if they're a client of yours and access on-demand tools, on-demand uh, video learning. I do a lot of stuff for teams and I send out little videos that they sit down when they need it and they watch it together as a team. This is not hard to do. It does not cost a lot of money. We just have to get a little bit more creative about doing it. So let's talk about where your opportunity is. This is really a summary of everything I talked about. So I wanna kind of summarize what we discussed here. The hot training topics, what's happening right now, all related to the shift since COVID. People need to get better at using digital learning, right? Digital technology, uh, resiliency, adaptability, huge topic, emotional agility, emotional intelligence, health and well being, leading through adversity, leading remotely, team connection, cohesion, culture, right? All the things we talked about. Anything that you currently are doing, if you can relate it to these topics, 
maybe tweak it slightly and go back to the clients you've worked with in the past, I think you may have an inroads to getting in there, right, to offering a workshop. How do we offer it? What are the ways that we can offer learning and development? There's a lot, right? There's virtual workshops. Some people are doing in-person workshops. Coaching, of course. We can do it one-on-one. -on -one. I tend to do a lot of group coaching with my programs because I put three people together from the same company and I teach them how to coach each other. Super powerful, ends up being scenario based, ends up being, you know, bringing in some of those things we already talked about. Um, Self-directed learning, that would be on an LMS system, e-learning, certification programs, train the trainer, assessments. Angelique's mentioned a lot of these. 360 tools, those are assessments to give leaders information on how they're showing up from others, right? Uh, presentations, case studies, demonstrate, all of these are ways that you can offer training. And sometimes I think we get stuck in one way, workshops, right? I was stuck there for a really, really long time, but I got really good at it. Now I'm looking at all these other ways to deliver learning and I'm taking into account the things companies care about. So let's talk about that. All right, what are the two things you can be doing with your learning right now, with your content right now? First of all, you wanna see if you can tie them to some of the hot topics, but one thing you wanna be thinking about, how do I make learning sticky? And when we say sticky, what that means is it sticks with you. I remember it, right? This is really important. So how do we do that? I've said some of these things already, but with the current content you have, can you start to build in some more case studies, scenario-based learning? Can you create collaborative, interactive activities that they do on Zoom together, right? Build communities of practice, focus on human connections, do small little projects as part of your workshop, as part of your program. Maybe you offer virtual one-on-one -on -one co coaching. You do a variety of self-directed learning, which is maybe they watch a video or read something. Then you hop on a webinar where you're doing virtual instructor-led training. You have peers teach. You do instant messaging, voice messaging, chatbots, awards, badges. All of these things make learning a little more sticky. Here's the second thing I wanna have you think about, and then we're gonna do a little breakout here in a minute, is how do we also take our content and break it down? Here's several ways. Can I take my content, maybe make an interactive PDF, an infographic? I am a huge fan of Vengage, V-E-N-N-A-G-E. I am like the infographic queen since I found that website. <laughs> Um, I take all my content, I pull it out, and I put it into steps, and all of a sudden I have an infographic. And so then I go on LinkedIn and I do a little video. I did one last night. You guys could go see it on LinkedIn. I did a little infographic and I made a video, seven minutes, micro, right? That is really, really easy to do. Short video clips, eBooks. Uh, you could do a quick how-to video. Record your webinars, break them up into chunks. Audiobooks, podcasts, we've talked a lot about a lot of these using apps to do some type of nudge, nudge messaging or doing it on your own, where people get an email, you know, once a week from you after they've attended a program. And then let me just say one last thing, and then we're going to put you into a breakout group and get your mastermind here to think about what can you do with the current learning that you have, with the current content that you have. The other thing that I want to say is a lot of people come to me and they have a half day workshop, right? That's what, that's your go-to. That's your gateway offering usually in a company. Now that we're virtual, I really encourage you to think about how can I take that content I have and do a lot of different things with it. Perhaps I offer it as a series, one hour over time, right? I don't need to do a half day anymore. Maybe I offer it as a coaching program. So people get the information and we just do little coaching bits on that information. And then I have them do peer coaching in between, right? And then we come back together uh, after a couple weeks and we talk about it. 
Maybe I do some consulting on that particular piece of content. I teach companies how to integrate it into their organization. Uh, maybe I turn it into a train the trainer. Maybe there's some of you that wish you had content and don't. This is a great community to really get that and find it. And then also any kind of done for them or outsource services. A lot of times when I go into an organization with a workshop, they say, what else do you have? Or how can we expand this? How can we make sure we keep talking about this? Well, we can do that for you, right? We can create little training aids. We can create little performance support tools like I just mentioned. How do you expand on what you already have? If it's good, let's not reinvent the wheel. So with that, we're gonna do a breakout. Uh, we're gonna do a quick 10 minute breakout and we're gonna put you into groups of four to five. I want you to think about your current offerings and what did you hear about today? Just one thing, don't go crazy. One thing that you are willing to try to do to enhance what you already have. So we'll see you in 10 minutes. All right, welcome back everybody. It's like little fireworks going off up here when everybody comes in, very fun. I hope that you got some good ideas from your peers in this space. I see a lot of head nods, that's excellent. Um, I'm really happy to hear that. What I want you to, I hope that you walk away with is realizing there is so much you can do with the content you already have, right? We try to reinvent the wheel so often and there's just a, some simple tweaks that we can make to really go back to our clients and offer them things that right now are really important using the language that they're speaking, right? With some of the things that I mentioned to you. So let me just review what we covered today. We talked about the current opportunity and there is opportunity. Companies are not decreasing their spending in employee and leadership development because they see it as a competitive advantage the companies that continue to invest in developing their people, that's gonna get out, right? People are gonna wanna work for them. They also don't want people to leave. So it might have been scary for a couple months, but now they're realizing we need to keep this going. We need to actually really double down on investing in our people. What's shifted because of COVID and how there really still is a lot of ways for you to take advantage and then lastly, different ways you can offer solutions to your clients right now. And so I wanna end with a quote, never let a serious crisis go to waste. And what I mean by that is an opportunity to do things you think you could not do before. So what is your next step to take advantage of this transformational moment? Now, what's great is we